Hey everyone, my name is Randy Lee and I'm an environmental engineer. I've been working in my profession for about five years now, so I can say with some certainty that I have some experience and know something about the environmental engineering field more so than the average person or student. That being said, here's everything you need to know about environmental engineering part one. One, you don't need to be a licensed professional engineer in order to get a job or even work as an environmental engineer. Contrary to belief, not every job title that has the word engineer on it needs to hire a certified engineer. There are definitely pros to getting the professional engineering license, but you don't need to get one just to start working. Two, you don't need to go to a highly prestigious college or an Ivy League just to get a job. Any university will do so long as it is ABET accredited that can give you a bachelor's degree in engineering, you know, that's enough. Just save yourself from the extra cost. Don't go heavy into student debt. You will be miserable in the long run, just paying it off. Three, environmental engineering, at least in my university, is a subcategory of civil engineering. That means that you belong as a civil engineer, technically speaking. Four, a master's degree or higher doesn't guarantee a job. Seriously, you can get a job with just a bachelor's degree. So don't waste your time or spend unnecessary money to get a degree that you think will guarantee a job or give you an extra pay raise. It doesn't always work that way, so do your research before you commit to higher education. Five, you don't need to be excellent in math, science, biology, or any other STEM related field in order to be successful. You just need to be good enough to pass those classes at your university. So for example, I don't use calculus or advanced math on a daily basis at my job. Honestly, I haven't even touched calculus since college. So if you're worried about being bad at math or it being the reason why you don't go into this field, just don't worry about it. Math is not your main priority as an environmental engineer. Six, piggybacking off of the previous point, you don't need to be an expert in GIS, AutoCAD, or any other computer software either. Some of these computer programs may not even be applicable to your day-to-day -day job. It all depends on your responsibilities and job description, but it will tell you when you apply for a job what you need to know to be good at. All this to say, not everything you learn at school will be used at your job. Seven, this is gonna be a tough pill to swallow, but you don't see the impact of your job. Yeah, I know many of you watching were like me during my student years. We wanted to make a difference in the world, so that's why we decided to pursue environmental engineering in the first place. However, it's not as visually impactful as you'd think. You don't see the drastic change in the amount of pollution around the world, or you see your research being implemented or adopted and accepted globally by all industrial facilities or politicians. It's sad to say, but change is slow if it's even accepted in the first place. Number eight, your friends and family are going to judge you based on the fact that you're pursuing this field. So if you're Asian like me, your family probably doesn't agree with your decision. They wanted you to go towards like the medical route, right? But I mean, that's easier said than done. Deep down, you know you wouldn't enjoy listening to them or going down the medical field anyway. So don't let them force their expectations on you. It's your life, not theirs. Nine, you're probably gonna be working at a desk in an office like 80% of the time. So if you're expecting to be exploring like the Amazon jungles or seeing lots of greenery, you're probably thinking of a different job. Although environmental engineers do travel, we're most likely not going to see those sites a lot. It's mostly already well-established facilities or industries. Like instead of seeing rainforest and exploring the jungle or implementing like the newest solar panels, you're probably just gonna go visit the gas station down the street. And finally, number 10, you don't need to be an environmental engineer to do the right thing and save the planet. So all of this is just a job title. If you really want to make an impact, start off by being an example in your local community. So be that one person to you know, start recycling or garden. Spread the word about sustainability and lead by example. You don't have to be perfect by being like a full vegetarian or not buying any consumer products. You know, that's just too extreme and unsustainable for your own sanity. But if everyone were just like 5% more sustainable than they were originally, or you know, they're just trying to be like you, although imperfect by themselves, that would already make a huge impact. So just by being, you know, 1% better can go a long way, especially if everyone suddenly became like 1% better. All right, so that's it. There's a lot more to be said about this field actually, but I'll just stop here. This was like an honest, opinionated video based off my own experience. I'm sure yours will differ and you'll disagree with some of my points, but 
you know, just don't be that one guy to make a big deal out of it. Just try to stay mature about it, okay? So if you found this video helpful, leave a comment if you liked it. Share what else I might have missed in this video. Again, I know there's a lot more to say and I didn't cover everything, but you'll just have to wait for the second part of this video to find out what else I missed. All right, so that's all for the video. See you in the next one. Goodbye.